Okay, let's go ahead and talk about Algebra 1. Now, when do you take Algebra 1? Well, uh, most students probably take Algebra 1 at the ninth grade level in high school. Uh, some students take it at the eighth grade level if they're kind of like, you know, really doing well in math and they're kind of getting ahead. But uh, typically it's eighth or ninth grade. It's your first year algebra course. Now, some of you that are maybe going back to school might be learning algebra level, algebra one level mathematics in a course, let's say like uh, math 101. It could be like a, a math course you could be taking at college. So it doesn't have to be called algebra one necessarily. But basically what we're talking about is first year algebra. Now, for some of you out there, you, you might be taking pre-algebra. Okay, now pre-algebra, that word pre kind of fools a lot of people because it's almost like, hey, this is the math course you take before you learn any algebra. But that's not the case. Pre-algebra is effectively an algebra course. You're just not doing algebra at the kind of an advanced level um, as algebra one. But still, you're learning a good amount of algebra. And you should actually be able to solve this problem if you have completed a good pre-algebra course. Now, what is the problem? Well, here it is. We have two equations. So we have this equation and this equation. We have two variables, x and y, x and y. And we want to go ahead and solve this, uh, this equation for both x and y, or this group of equations. Now, I'm not kind of uh, defining what's going on here right now, because I want to give you an opportunity to interpret the problem so you can get full credit and get that complete uh, kind of self-satisfaction out of solving this all on your own. Matter of fact, if you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to explain exactly what type of problem this is and how to solve it. But this is a very big, important topic in algebra. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping students learn mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle with math, or you maybe you hate math. Maybe math is like the topic that you just don't want to deal with the most. Uh, maybe you failed math before in the past. It doesn't make a difference. You can be successful in math. But in order to be um, successful in math, there's three things you need. One, you got to be willing to work hard. So if you're not willing to put in the effort, you're not going to be able to learn math. So if you're not working at uh, learning right now, try to have a better attitude and start putting in the effort, and you're going to get an immediate return on learning. The second thing you need is encouragement. This is really important for those of you that struggle math, okay? Especially those of you that don't like math. The reason why most students uh, tend to not like math is because they're frustrated with math, okay? They're not being, they're not experiencing success with math. But once you start learning math and you're like start doing well in it, you probably will change your attitude. You probably actually will start liking math. Now, this leads me to the third thing, okay? Uh, so the second reason, again, was encouragement, right? I'm telling you, don't give up. There's absolute hope. But the third thing you need is great math instruction, okay? You need to be learning from something or someone that you actually understand. If you're sitting in a classroom and, you know, you're learning from somebody that you're not understanding from, okay, and that unfortunately can happen because math is a technical subject. I could uh, teach you this in a very technical way, but guess what? Uh, I could just talk to you all day long. If you're not understanding, we, we both wasted our time, okay? I wasted my time trying to teach you, and you're wasting your time because you don't understand what I'm saying. The way I teach math is I like to explain math so all students can understand what's going on, and I don't water down the topics as well, okay? I don't like make it so easy that you don't actually learn the concepts. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it, something like the SAT, ACT, teacher certification, GED, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it. In the description of this video, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Uh, most students take average notes at best. A lot of students take no notes. I'm going to tell you right now, you know who takes great notes? Those students who get grades like this. So if you want to improve in mathematics, the first like, easy thing you can start doing is start taking better notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the answer to this equation. And the topic we're dealing with here is called systems. Okay, so if you were thinking to yourself, is he talking about systems of equations? Yes, I am. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. So we have x is equal to 3y plus 9 and x plus y is equal to 8. What are x and y? Well, let me go ahead and show you that, uh, show you the answers right now. x is equal to 33 over 4 and y is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so that is the solution to this system. If you got this right, that's very impressive, certainly impressive enough for a nice happy face and A plus a 100%. And let's throw in some stars so you can just brag to your friends. Hey, I know how to do systems. I'm pretty good in Algebra 1. That's very, very good. Now, before I get into actually how to solve this uh, system, let's just quickly talk about what a system is and what the solution represents. Let me just kind of get rid of some of the stuff here so we can concentrate a bit on what I'm going to say here. Okay, now this is a huge topic in algebra, but um, what we're dealing with here is a uh, two variable a linear system. Now this I want you to think of as one line. Okay, notice I described it as a, a linear system. So this is a line that we could graph. Let's call this line one. And this is another line, line two. Okay, now this is another skill. Hopefully you know how to do. Hopefully you know how to graph lines. If you don't know how to graph lines, then you definitely need to do some work on your algebra. By the way, anything I'm talking about here, if you're struggling in, I'm going to suggest checking out the course, my Algebra 1 course. My pre-algebra course is pretty well, um, uh, a pretty good fit for those of you that need to really kind of review more basic level algebra as well. But anyways, we have two lines, this line and this line. So let's suppose we graph these lines on the xy plane here. Okay, here's x and here's y. Now, I'm not graphing these specific lines, but let's say I have one line right here, line one, and let's say I have another line right here, line two. Okay, the point of intersection, this point right there, is a specific xy ordered pair. It's a specific point on the xy plane. This point of, of uh, intersection represents the solution to a system, okay? or a two-variable linear system. So when you're looking at a system in algebra, you need to conceptualize, you know, hey, we're dealing with lines here. I'm looking for the point of intersections because this all ties in. Now, if you're completely lost on what I'm talking about, like, I didn't even know that. Wow, that's interesting. Da, 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 da. Well, that shows me or that tells me that you really need to kind of brush up on systems. Again, this is a very, very big topic. Uh, in algebra, and there's various methods that you can use to solve systems, all right? You need to know all this stuff, but let's go ahead and get into the actual problem right now. All right, so as I indicated, this is a two-variable linear system. Now, the way this problem is written, the way I wrote it like this, uh, you might be saying, well, I'm not used to seeing a problem like, uh, you know, written in this format, because here I have one equation, and here I have another equation. The typical way you'll see a system problem written at the algebra one level is uh, you'll have one equation like this and another equation underneath it and um, oftentimes you'll have brackets like so around uh, your system okay so again we're dealing with a two variable x and y two variables linear okay which means that these are lines that we can graph system okay now later as you uh, get to more advanced mathematics like algebra two and beyond, you'll deal with three variable uh, linear systems and you get into like things like pre-calculus, you'll deal with uh, systems that are non-linear, which is totally cool. So anyways, uh, you need to understand that uh, this uh, topic of system just continues to um, you know, uh, be with you as you progress in mathematics. Okay, so you need to understand the fundamentals and that's what we're talking about right now. All right, so again, there's different uh, approaches we could take to solve this linear system. Now, at the algebra one level, these are the primary techniques that you will learn to solve a two-variable linear system. The first is called the graphing method, okay? In other words, I can actually graph each one of these lines on some graph paper and look to see where these two lines intersect, okay? Where they intersect, that point is, in fact, the solution. Well, that's not really a practical method, but you still need to know it. The other two methods you need to um, have uh, down is the substitution method, 
Okay. And uh, these are big uh, topics in and of themselves, but hopefully you kind of recognize, oh, yeah, that's a method that I use. The substitution method and the other one is called linear combination or elimination method. Okay, so these are the three primary methods that you need to know in order to solve systems, linear systems in algebra, uh, certainly at the algebra one level. Uh, when you progress into like Algebra 2, you'll learn other additional techniques as well. But let's go ahead and stick with this right here, these um, techniques. And the easiest uh, way to solve this particular problem is using the substitution method, okay? If you use uh, the linear combination or the elimina elimination method, that's fine. But by far, the easiest way to solve this particular problem, the way it's set up, is using the substitution method. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to uh, use the substitution method. Let me erase all this stuff. Now, the way I do my videos, okay, the way I teach is this. I like to, I could show you how to do this problem real quick. I could be like, okay, here, here's how you do it, da, 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 da. Now, uh, you might be like, okay, I get that. But I like to really explain things fully so you have complete comprehension on not only why we do things, the bigger picture topic, this is how you truly learn mathematics, okay? Don't just try to learn math by, okay, let me, I can do this problem, I can do that problem, I can do that problem. You're not understanding the big picture. If you're not understanding the big picture, you're not gonna be truly successful at math. Okay, so here is our two equations. Now let's notice here, I'm saying uh, the equation says x is equal to three y plus nine. And then I have this equation here, x plus y is equal to eight. The name of the game is to try to create one equation with one variable. We want to get one equation with just one variable. That variable could be an equation all with x's or all with y's. It doesn't make a difference. But if you can see here, the easiest way to get one equation with one variable is to replace this x right here. Because we're saying that x is equal to 3y plus 9. Let's replace this x with 3y plus 9, and then we'll have one equation with all y's, okay? Then we could solve that for y, and then we'll talk about how we will get x. So if you're like saying to yourself, oh, I get this, well, you should pause the video and, you know, take the problem from here and actually solve it. But let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so again, we are talking about the substitution method. All right, so here's our two equations. We're going to replace this x with 3y plus 9. And anytime you replace anything uh, in algebra, always uh, get in the habit of using parentheses. Okay, so this x we're going to replace again with 3y plus 9. So this is going to be 3y plus 9 plus y is equal to 8. Okay, so you can see this work right here. And now we have a, a nice equation with just y's. Okay, so y and y. And hopefully at this point you have the skills to solve this equation. But let's go ahead and uh, work on this right now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is combine like terms. I have 3y and y. That gives me 4y uh, plus 9 is equal to 8. So now I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. Okay, and when I do that, uh, now I'm not showing that work, but uh, hopefully, well, let me just uh, show you right here. 4y plus 9 is equal to 8. And I do this just in case some of you are like lost about this. But when I subtract 9 from both sides of the equation, I want to end up with 8 plus a negative 9, which is negative 1. All right, so that's why I have now 4y is equal to negative 1. And how do I solve this basic equation? I just need to divide both sides of the equation by 4. And when I do that, I get y is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so that is one half of the answer. Remember, we are dealing with a two-variable linear system. I'm looking for that specific x, y point where these two lines intersect. We just actually located that y coordinate of that point. Okay, so always keep in mind what your solutions represent. All right, so I have y, but I need x. So how can I get x? Well, pretty easy. Uh, now that we know that y is equal to the negative one-fourth, we have two equations we can use. I can use this equation here, our original equations, x plus y is equal to 8, or I can use uh, x is equal to 3y plus 9. Now, this is by far the easiest equation to use in order to solve for x, because I know y is equal to negative one-fourth. I could just plop that in right here. 
this y is negative one fourth. Now, this y right here is also negative one fourth. I can just plug this in and solve for x, but it's easier to do it in this equation because when I do the math here, I'm going to get what x is equal to. All right, so well, actually, this is still a pretty good equation as well. But uh, anyways, it's really up to you. Both equations will get you the right answer. But let's go ahead and do this equation. So we're going to uh, replace this y with negative 1 fourth. Okay, so that's going to give us uh, y, or x is going to be equal to 3 times, this is 3y pl uh, plus 9. We're gonna, Again, we're repl replacing the y with negative 1 fourth. So now this is going to be 3 times negative 1 fourth plus 9. So this is going to be x is equal to negative 3 fourths plus 9. Okay, so hopefully I didn't miss say, uh, state anything, but you can see the work right here. So now, at this point, you need to know how to work with fractions. So how do we add negative 3 fourths plus 9? Well, we're going to have to rewrite this uh, uh, 9 such that it has the lowest common denominator. So anytime you're like... Um, Looking at a number and it doesn't, you're like, oh, I'm working with fractions. Just make this into a fraction, put it over one. So you're now you can see, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to get the LCD, which in this case is four. Now, if you struggle with fractions, I'm gonna definitely suggest um, you checking out my pre algebra course because I teach systems and fractions in that course but here's the work when I um, uh, fix up this 9 so it has the LCD of 4 I got to multiply both the numerator and denominator of 4 so that's going to be 36 over 4 so now I have negative 3 plus 4 uh, negative 3 4 plus 36 over 4 so when I do all that you get 33 over 4 and uh, this is uh, perfectly fine uh, you don't need to turn this into a mixed number fraction. As long as this is fully simplified, that is uh, all you need to have for most teachers. Of course, if your teacher wants this as a mixed fraction, go ahead and do that. And then, of course, here is our final answer. X is 33 or 4. Y is negative 1 fourth. Again, these represent that ordered pair, that point where these two lines, if you were to uh, uh, graph them, they would intersect at this point right here, this coordinate 33 over 4, comma, negative 1 fourth. Okay, so systems, huge, huge topic in algebra. You absolutely need to know uh, systems in algebra 1 uh, and beyond. Now, again, if you're struggling with, let's say, the fraction, some of the more basic concepts, if you just want it like an introduction to systems, which would include the substitution method, uh, linear combination, graphing method, then check out my pre-algebra uh, course. Uh, if you want like the full-on systems uh, unit and chapter, check out my algebra one course. I get into uh, systems of uh, inequalities, linear programming, which is a very challenging topic for a lot of students. So again, this is stuff that you you know you're going to want to know at the algebra one level and beyond. Of course, by the way, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well about systems that you can check out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.